When we come back, we'll take a look at home automation. Welcome back. So one thing I always wanted to do is when I got a house, I wanted to deck it with tech. Just deck the heck out of it with tech. And that's exactly what I did. I bought a house and one thing I've been working on for weeks was decking it out with as much tech as I can. So home automation is pretty much anything that you buy for your home that connects to the internet and it allows you to, you know, control that, whether it be an outlet or a switch to control it through a phone or you can use something like Amazon Echo to control it. Now there's two kinds of home automation and I'm speaking directly from my experience. So if I mention a product that I'm having a lot of difficulties with, I'm not saying that that product is bad, but there's two kinds of home automation devices out there. You can get one that connects directly to the internet, such as the Belkin Wemo switches. They connect directly to your router, which in turn connects to the internet. And you can control that switch using the Wemo app on your phone. Now another type of home automation is a home automation hub, such as SmartThings. And that's what I'll be using throughout this video. I have a SmartThings hub and that's what I have experience with. A home automation hub is basically a central point for all your connected devices to connect to. So instead, let's say you have a Philips Hue light bulb and you have a Belkin Wemo switch, you could connect both of those things to a hub that supports them. And you can use the hubs app to control those devices rather than jumping into the Philips Hue app and then the Belkin app to control each device separately. Turn on kitchen light. Turn off kitchen light. I can go in the app and I can set the dim level. So turn it on. Dim it 100%. Dim it back 50%. And I can also launch my Logitech Harmony activities. Here's how control for the Z-Wave lock looks. And when the sensors work, it's pretty cool. It displays some pretty neat features such as the battery and the temperature of where that sensor is located. So it's saying right here it's about 80 degrees. So when they work they are cool but this is the last sensor that's working. And here is and here is the Z-Wave garage door opener in action. Now there are pros and cons with each device. For example, we'll start with the Belkin Wemo switch. These switches require their own app in order for you to control it. We're assuming that we're not using a hub here. And just like I mentioned before, if you have a Philips Hue bulb and you have a Belkin Wemo switch, you're going to have to jump into each stock app to control that particular device. It can be cumbersome at times. Now one of the plus sides of having a Belkin Wemo switch and a a Philips Hue bulb is that they're connected directly to the web. So unless your internet's not working, you're always going to have access to those devices. Now with home automation hubs, the pros are that all your devices can connect to one central point. You can control all those devices through the hubs app. Now the downfall with that is number one, each device has to be supported by the hub. And number two, if the hub goes down, any devices that can only connect to the hub in order to be connected to the web, won't work. As everyone knows about the Amazon Echo, it's a really cool device and that's what I use personally. Now the Amazon Echo allows you to give a voice command that will control your smart devices. Only problem with the Amazon Echo is that each device has to be supported by the Amazon Echo. Now one of the benefits though of using the Amazon Echo is that if you have a home automation hub and Echo supports that hub, you will be able to control most of those devices using Alexa. But apart from the hub, the Amazon Echo supports a lot of smart devices out of the box. Like for an example, I can use Alexa to control my Belkin Wemo switches directly or I can have her control them through the SmartThings hub. One thing that I found is that she's more responsive controlling it through the SmartThings hub than controlling it directly. 
One problem I experienced is that when she was connected directly to the Wemo switches, I would tell her to turn off the light or turn on the light. And she would say okay, but the lights would remain on or off. I would have to repeat myself at least two times before she gets it right. But having her connected to those Wemo switches through the SmartThings hub, she responds to my commands better. Here's a Belkin Wemo switch in the playroom. Alexa, turn on playroom light. Alexa, turn off playroom light. Okay. There's a slight delay, but the light always comes on or off depending on my command. Now, I gotta mention Google Home because it is a competitor of the Amazon Echo. But I won't go into details with the Google Home. Because out of the box, it doesn't really support that much devices. You, can, you could literally list them on one sheet of paper. But Google Home does support the SmartThings hub. So you will be able to control all your devices that are connected to the SmartThings Hub. Now I won't say who is better, which one is better, but I will say that Amazon Echo definitely has more support than the Google Home. And that's because Amazon Echo has been out since 2014. Since then, the Amazon Echo has picked up a lot of useful skills and a lot of partners with different smart devices. Now if you were to ask me which one you should, which one you should get, I know the Google Home might be tempting because of its ability to hold a conversation and connect to your Chromecast and talk to other Google Homes. But if it's support you're looking for, you can't go wrong with the Amazon Echo. If you get the Amazon Echo, chances are the device you get in the future will be supported. Now one of the added benefits of using a home automation hub is that you have the ability to add more devices to your home automation. For example, most home automation hubs support Zigbee and Z-Wave. One of the benefits of using a home automation hub is that you can add Z-Wave and Zigbee products to your home automation. When you add Z-Wave products to your list of devices you want to get for your home, you increase your options drastically. A lot of smart home devices don't actually connect directly to the web. They actually use a protocol called Z-Wave that connects to the home automation hub. This is the GE Z-Wave light switch in action. Blue light means that it's off. You can turn on the light. And then you take off the light. Now you can have this blue light either come on when the light is on or come on when the light is off. You won't be able to just use this, buy this and use it. It's not an IoT device, which stands for Internet of Things. It doesn't connect directly to the internet. You're going to need a smart home hub like the Smart Things hub in order to connect this. So this connects to this and then connects to the internet. But as I mentioned before, when you add Z-Wave products to your list of devices you can get for your home, you increase your options because most smart home devices are actually Z-Wave. And one of the benefits of using Z-Wave is that it just works. That's why it's the home automation standard. And the same thing goes for Alexa. When I tell her to control any Z-Wave device, she does it almost instantly and she never has an issue. Like for the Z-Wave dimmer switch, I can even tell Alexa to dim it 50%, 20%, 100%, and she'll do it. Alexa, set kitchen light 100%. Okay. Alexa, set kitchen light 10%. Okay. Alexa, set kitchen light 50%. Okay. Alexa, turn off kitchen light. Okay. Another benefit of using Z-Wave devices is that they interconnect with each other. So let's say you have a home and you have a Z-Wave lock in the front, a Z-Wave switch in the middle, and a Z-Wave switch at the end of your house. Now what happens is if your home automation hub is at the front of the house next to the lock, it won't be able to connect to the switch in the back of the house correctly. So what it does is it creates its own Z-Wave network. So the lock will connect to the switch in the middle of the home that will connect to the switch at the end of the home. And they will interconnect with each other. And as you get more Z-Wave devices, that little network will grow and your Z-Wave network will become stronger. And you could probably have Z-Wave devices outside your home and they'll connect to your home automation hub, no problems. Now, another benefit of home automation hubs is that you can create scenes. And scenes allow your home to fully automate itself so you don't have to do anything. I'll give you an example. So when I leave, my home automation hub 
uses my GPS on the phone to see that I'm leaving the geofence that's created around my home. Once my phone leaves that geofence, the home automation hub triggers a scene called away. And that pretty much tells the home automation hub that no one is home. So what it will do is bump up the thermostat, turn off any lights that are on, and turn on a little night light. Now when I come home, my phone enters the geofence around my home and the SmartThings hub automatically knows now that I've returned home. So what it will do is open the garage door, turn on the garage light and the kitchen light, and then bump down the thermostat. And one final example is the good night scene. When I go to bed, I can set my bedtime for good night. But since my sleep schedule varies, I manually activate good night. So I can have all the lights on, go in my room, lay in my bed, and on my phone, I activate good night and I can put my phone down. All the lights will automatically come off. The lock for the front door will automatically lock if it's unlocked and the thermostat will bump down. And the last benefit of Home Automation Hub is security. I don't know about other hubs, but the SmartThings has security built in. Basically what that does is it allows you to utilize the sensors that come with SmartThings Hub. And if those sensors are triggered while the security is armed, depending on what devices you have, you can pretty much automate what happens when those triggered are censored when the security is armed. You can get an alarm that plugs into a regular outlet and it connects to the SmartThings Hub. And when the door is open, when your security is armed, you can have all the lights in the house is flashing and that alarm going off. So little things like that make a big difference when you're, when you're trying to decide which way you should go. Either just buying devices that connect directly to the web or getting a home automation hub. So the sensors that come with the SmartThings hub is completely garbage in my opinion. So if you're looking for Z-Wave sensors, I would recommend Slage. A lot of people swear by the Slage Z-Wave sensors. Not only are they built tough and the same price as uh, SmartThings sensors, but they also support external connection. Four-way, three-way, two-way switches. And this is basically four switches, three switches, or two switches that all control the same light. When it comes to switches like these, you can't just get anything and use it. For example, Wemo switch only supports single pole switches. That means one switch that controls one item, a light, a fan, or whatever. You cannot use the Belkin Wemo switches on two switches or more that control a light. So that really limits what you can buy. The only thing that I found that I could use for multiple switches that connect one item is the GE Z-Wave switch. So what you do is you get a master switch, it can be dimmable if you want, and then you get an add-on switch. So for example, let's say you have three switches that connect to one light. So you would install the master switch on whichever side you want, and then the other two switches you plug up with this add-on switch. Another thing to keep in mind when you're designing your home automation system if you have a particular room you would like dimmable lights to be installed, make sure you plan that ahead of time so you get a switch that's dimmable and you get the bulbs that are dimmable. Now another cool thing you can do to increase the possibility of home automation is if you have a Logitech Harmony remote. Now I'm talking about the Logitech Harmony remote that comes with a hub. This is the kind of Harmony remote you need in order to connect it to a home automation hub. So here we're going to launch the Harmony Watch a Movie activity. I've turned on the kitchen light and the living room light. They're both on. TV's off. I have my Logitech Harmony remote. And so I'm going to launch Watch a Movie. So now when I launch the activity, what happens is that it turns on the TV puts the TV on the correct input, turns on my AV system, puts it on the correct input, wake up the Nexus player, then it turns off the kitchen light, turns off the living room light, and then it turns on the LED behind the TV. And then when I turn off everything, the lights will come back on. Now speaking of IFT, it really does open the door to more possibilities. 
I'll give you an example. I have a Slage Deadbolt. Now the Slage Deadbolt connects to the SmartThings Hub, but you cannot give Alexa access to it. So one thing I did was I created a recipe within IFT, and that allows Alexa to open or close the lock. Mind you, I have to say Alexa, trigger lock front door, but it's not that complicated now that I've gotten used to it. Here's the Slage Z-Wave Deadbolt. Alexa, trigger unlock front door. Alexa, trigger lock front door. Sending that to it. Because it's going through ift, it takes a while. If you have a device that you're not able to connect to your Amazon Echo or anything in that matter, always check out ift. Now let's talk about costs. Home automation is not cheap is expensive and if you don't know what you're looking for you can end up paying a lot of money every single device that i have in my home automation system i was able to get on sale my system is not complete in any way and i'm still working on growing my home automation network now some of you might not be ready for amazon echo and that's fine but if you want a central hub you can definitely rig your own hub in the event that amazon echo doesn't work basically it's a amazon fire tablet that's been sideloaded with the Logitech Harmony app. Now, remember I told you I connected my Harmony app to my SmartThings hub? Well, now in the Harmony app, I'm able to control all my light switches. And here is the Amazon Fire Tablet hub that I created in case the Amazon Echo goes down. So over here, I go to light switch and you can control the kitchen light. You can control your Z-Wave lock and you control all the email switches. So I have the Harmony Hub running on this Amazon Fire Tablet 24 seven and it's mounted on the wall. So if Amazon Echo doesn't work, so you can go to the Fire Tablet and control whatever device you want. Amazon Echo is just so much faster, so much faster to use than the Fire Tablet. And it could be an option that you could use if you can't justify spending so much money on an Amazon Echo. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. You guys have a great day.